This week, detained Wall Street Journal reporter and New Jersey native Evan Gershkovich appeared before the press for the first time in months, standing behind glass walls in a Moscow city court as officials declined to consider his latest appeal to be released from jail on espionage charges. Charges he and the U.S. government deny and have been designated a wrongful detention. The decision means the 31-year-old Gershkovich will remain jailed until at least November 30th. But behind the scenes, a group of highly skilled diplomats and negotiators have been working around the clock to secure his release. Being led by U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs, Roger Carstens, who joins me now. Mr. Carstens, you've been called Washington's hostage deal maker in chief. At this point, to the extent that you can tell us, do you see a clear pathway for Evan Gershkovich's release? Oh, well, Brianna, it's, uh, it's good to be with you and your audience. Uh, as far as my title goes, what I can tell you is that when we uh, work on bringing someone home, it's a huge team effort. Uh, it involves uh, people from all over the U.S. government, from Department of Justice, uh, FBI, CIA, Department of Defense, uh, Border Protection. It's amazing how many people throw themselves into this. In terms of the path forward, uh, I think to my mind, I, I see a path forward, uh, but it's, it, these paths are always tough. Uh, they're, most of the times, they're not very linear. Um, and a lot of times, you have to get alignment uh, from not only within the U.S. government, but within partners and allies. So to my mind, I see a path, but it's, it's still going to uh, be a challenging one. Uh, having said that, if you've seen, uh, based on what we just did with Iran in the last few days, the president of the United States and the secretary of state, uh, they have uh, a strong purpose and they want to get all this work done. So my marching orders are clear. Find a way to bring Evan home and then go, go get it done. Yeah, those five uh, Iranian U.S. and Iranian citizens you mentioned did just uh, touch down this week in, in Virginia. Of course, you were there for that. Where do discussions stand, though? Because as you're alluding to, these are very complicated matters. Uh, what does Russia want in exchange? Well, those are the things, I'm, in a way, I would love to talk about. But at the same time, I have to be mindful that uh, when you start to negotiate in public and start talking about what it is that's going to possibly get a deal done, you're in a way negotiating in public. Uh, the Russians would be uh, listening to uh, uh, that or that, that information would be passed on, and it just wouldn't benefit uh, Evan. So uh, what I can tell you is uh, we have an open channel with the Russians. Uh, as you well know, we were able to bring Trevor Reed back and Brittany Griner back. So there's a pathway forward to discuss uh, the, this issue with them. Of that, of that, I can just uh, tell you straight up. Can you say, though, whether it seems as though this will result in some type of prisoner exchange or perhaps uh, a policy exchange? In the case of Iran, of course, it was a bit of a dual uh, situation there where money yeah. was unfrozen and um, there were prisoners released. I tell you, Brandon, you're asking all the right questions. It, it, again, it might be something I really can't discuss, uh, but I'll, I want to share this. Uh, at times, you don't really know. I think uh, I can I could probably give drudge up a uh, drudge up a few examples of some negotiations that we've had in the last three years to where you go in with a strong feeling that the other side is going to want X. And by the time you're done talking to them, you realize they actually want B. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go in with, um, uh, uh, I, I would say, uh, I want to say a strong offer that might not be the right verbiage. We're going to go in prepared to discuss. And we think we know what direction it might go, but the Russians, you know, they're, they're tough negotiators and they may take it in another direction and that's fine. We're going to find a way to meet, close the gap between two sides and find a way to bring Evan home. How concerned are you about this? What seems to be an increasing practice of hostage diplomacy? Well, you know, Brianna, it's interesting. Uh, uh, anecdotally, you would think that's true, but the Foley Foundation just released a report last week that show there's actually been a 22% decrease in uh, wrongful detentions by uh, other nation states. So uh, I, I can tell you that as we bring people back, and the Biden administration right now has brought 35 people home to date, um, the, the numbers aren't really going back up. The numbers are actually going in the other direction. Roger Carstens is the U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs. Thank you, and uh, we wish you good luck in your work. Brianna, thanks so much. And to your viewers, thank you all.